start the photo now. All right. <laughs> Come on in, y'all. Y'all well, welcome. Thank you for coming out. Holly May is signing again today. Thank you, ma'am. Chaplain Norris Darden. Colonel? Yes, sir. Pray for you, sir. Let's bow. We come today thanking you, God, for your faithfulness, for loving us, and for allowing us to trust you, even through times as difficult as these. We pray today that we will heed your word, that you love us, and you said, cast all of our cares upon you, because you care for us. Even as we pray for those in the Bahamas, God, we know that you're able to turn a storm. You're able to say to that storm, peace, be still. We give you glory now. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 John Quirello, please. Thank you, Governor. We're already seeing periods of heavy rain and gusty winds along the coast, and conditions will deteriorate through tonight as Hurricane Dorian approaches. Dorian remains a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles per hour as it lifts northward off the east coast of Florida. The center of Dorian will pass very close to the South Carolina coast Thursday into Thursday night and is expected to remain a dangerous hurricane. It would only take a slight change in the track to bring the eye of Dorian on shore along the coast. Hurricane conditions are expected along the coast, with peak wind gusts possibly exceeding 90 miles per hour along the beaches of Charleston, Georgetown, and Myrtle Beach. Tropical storm winds could occur west into parts of the Midlands. This will result in downed trees and power lines, and possibly some structural damage as well. Of even, of even greater concern is the potential for life-threatening storm surge. Salt water could rise as much as 4 to 8 feet above normally dry ground across locations along the coast and farther inland along tidal waterways. This surge will enter structures and make roads impassable. The storm surge will be most significant around the times of high tide tonight and Thursday afternoon along the southern and central portions of the coast and Thursday afternoon into early Friday morning along the northern part of the coast. Heavy rainfall of 6 to 12 inches with locally higher amounts uh, will likely produce flash flooding in low-lying areas east of I-95. Do not attempt to drive through flooded roadways. As conditions deteriorate, please do not venture outdoors. All threats from this storm should be taken seriously. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> we thought it was coming, and, and here it is. It, uh, this hurricane parked for about a day and a half down in the Bahamas, and uh, it, it's getting here a little weaker than it, it could have, but it is, it's, now it's gotten here. So it's now a Category 2 hurricane, as John Quirello said. Category 2 is 96 to 109 miles an hour. And right now it has sustained winds of 105 miles an hour. So that's a, that's a lot of wind. And you can see from the forecast that the, the <coughs> red area around Charleston, Hilton Head, right along the coast there, those are hurricane, anything over 74 miles an hour is considered hurricane winds. So the fact that the eye of the hurricane, the center of the hurricane, is, is not inland uh, doesn't mean much because right off the edge of the, of the center is where we're going to be unless something changes. Now it could change and come <coughs> more to the west, inland, which would be even worse, or it could uh, turn and, and go out, out to sea, which we, we're hoping it'll do, but we've been hoping that the whole time and it hadn't, hadn't happened yet. So we have to be prepared. Again, if it shifts to the east, that would be great. But right now, we expect it to hit, Bu hit Beaufort, down in, around Hilton Head in Beaufort County, about 6 to 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, something like that, give or take, unless it, unless it changes. And then it'll just work its way on up the coast through Charleston, Georgetown, Myrtle Beach, and on into North Carolina. So our message today is if you are still in an evacuation zone, you still have time to get out. 
but time to get out is running out. Because once the wind speeds get up to about 40 or 45 miles an hour, the emergency crews will not be able to come in and get you. They will be pulling out today. They were already starting to reverse the lanes back to where they were before because we have to get all that equipment, the cones and barricades out in order to be safe. In fact, I-26, we had that reversed, as you know, going from Charleston to Columbia, had the whole highway open for Columbia bound and beyond bound traffic, westbound, and uh, we decided to keep that open based on conditions and based on the high traffic flow. We decided earlier today to leave that open, not to close that at noon, but to leave it open until 2 o'clock, and there were a lot of people taking advantage of that. But that is now, that's now being closed, and no one can get on that other side to come to Columbia now. But the other, the, the regular side, the westbound side towards Columbia, of course, is wide open, and there'll be officers uh, there. Uh, all the regular equipment will be there. The officers on the other other highways leading away from the coast, and we urge everybody to drive safely. And if you, again, if you have not left, you still have time. But time is running out. Right now, Charleston is experiencing flooding brought on by king tides. Uh, the winds are bad, as we mentioned. You see the what's expected as of right now. That's the best forecast we have. But the water we know is going to be worse. It is the water that kills people. It is the water that is, that is the real danger. And it is clear that we are going to have a lot of water. Hurricane Dorian's storm surge will begin to be felt along the coast this afternoon and it will be pushing the water inland into the marshes and the rivers and at the same time the rain is calculated to be 10 to 15 inches in this this period here will be falling and trying to to get out going into the rivers and coming out so you're going to have a collision of water right there along our coast which is going to make that storm surge even even higher and again, more people die in hurricanes from water than they do from wind or anything else. So again, we urge everyone, if you are in the evacuation zone, it's not too late, but it's getting too late, and you need to go ahead and leave. Now, if you choose not to leave, and we know there are always some people that do, we'd like to mention again that we do not know what the water is going to be like. So th this may be a record, it may not be. Again, the hurricane may turn and go out to sea, which is what we hope. But there's going to be a lot of water. So if you do choose to stay, and of course when you have winds that high, there are things flying around in the air, that can, uh, can be very dangerous as well. But if you do cho choose to stay here, a few simple things we ask you to do. Tell your loved ones or next of kin where you plan to be, where you plan to be isolated for some time. And get up as high as you can in whatever structure that is, assuming it's a stable structure and also protect your pets because you won't be able to run out and go get them you know, have, have them with you have them in a safe place stay indoors don't go outside and stay away from windows and glass doors chances are they'll be broken if not by the surge by some flying debris of some kind uh, <clears throat> take refuge if you can in a small interior room, a closet, a hallway, something that does not have windows because windows are liable to shatter and glass well, is very dangerous. Keep the interior doors closed and secure. Embrace the external doors. Close the curtains. Close the blinds. And again, get inside. Uh, secure the important personal documents, wills, papers, deeds, things that deeds are generally recorded at the courthouse, but people have a lot of important papers that very difficult insurance papers, things like that. Be sure you have those <coughs> with you. Have them in a waterproof bag or place where they will not be destroyed. And don't go outside. If even if there is a lull in the in the wind, don't go outside because it could be the could be the eye of the hurricane passing over here. And that, if it passes over, that means the other end of the hurricane is coming in just a few minutes. Uh, be prepared to go without electricity for a good while. If you have a generator, keep it outside. Don't put it inside with you. Point the exhaust away from the house. If you, if you have it turned on, people get killed from, from that. Also, use flashlights and batteries. Don't use candles. Or you burn the, 
liable to catch something on fire and plan to be stuck there for a while. As I say, it will be dangerous for the emergency personnel to come in uh, after the wind gets up to about 45 miles an hour until it goes down. Uh, once the hurricane and the winds pass, they won't be able to come back in. And whatever you do, don't attempt to swim away through standing water. You don't know what's in it. You don't know what's floating in it. You don't know what's under it. And don't drive in it, of course, because uh, the road might be gone, and we've had tragedies like that. Finally, on <coughs> school and state government closings, we're continuing just like we've been doing for uh, Tuesday and today, tomorrow. The schools and state government offices will remain closed, those that have, have been closed. That is tomorrow, September the 5th, uh, in the following counties. And they are, again, these are the same ones as before. Jasper, Beaufort, Carleton, Charleston, Berkeley, Dorchester, Georgetown, and Ory. And they will stay closed, those are state government offices, and the schools will stay closed until further notice. And some of the county offices are closing it as well. And if we make any changes in that tomorrow, we'll, we'll be sure to let you know. Now, General McCarty, National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Yes. Uh, the soldiers and airmen of the South Carolina National Guard are continuing to uh, uh, prepare for this storm. We have approximately 1,600 on duty at this time. Uh, many of those are continuing to support the Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Safety in the evacuation and the supporting SLED and law enforcement missions. They will continue to do so until it's deemed necessary for them to go to their appointed shelters where they will ride out the storm. Just like to, again, reiterate what the governor said, uh, take this time now if you are, uh, haven't uh, uh, left the affected area, that opportunity is there for you to do so or prepare yourself. Uh, there will become a time here before too terribly long that the conditions will not allow first responders to go back in to, uh, to make those kind of rescues. So take the time to do so. In preparation for the storm, we have moved in 90 what we call high water vehicles to help evacuation after the storm has passed through. Those will be spread evenly <coughs> up the entire coastline and we will be able to reposition them as necessary to respond to the needs. We've also moved in uh, debris uh, removal teams to help open up the areas to get our first responders in as quickly as we can. We've got aircraft that will be available to support the <coughs> helicopter aquatic rescue teams. We've got seven UH-60 uh, Black Hawk helicopters. Uh, four of those are heart capable. They will be partnered with the State Fire Marshal's Office to help provide that aquatic rescue if those situations are necessary. We've got two UH-72 Lakota helicopters. One of those is also heart capable. And then we have four uh, CH-47 Chinooks. Those are heavy lift that we can take in supplies or move out individuals as necessary. Uh, we are also looking now to prepare for the reentry process. We're looking to determine what additional assets may be necessary. We have significant assets still in the South Carolina Guard that can be called up, and we've been working with our uh, neighboring states to prepare EMACs if those are necessary, and we will work with our federal partners to bring in active duty forces if that's deemed necessary also. So we'll be prepared for whatever the next phase of the operation brings us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, General. Secretary Christy Hall. Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. So we continue to uh, uh, develop and uh, move forward with our traffic management plans with our partners with DPS, National Guard, and local law enforcement. We also continue uh, today moving forward and pre-positioning DOT crews and other crews in order to provide a rapid response and accelerated recovery on the uh, after the storm passes through. As the governor mentioned, our evacuation routes continue to function well all across the state. The I-26 reversal, as he mentioned, was extended an additional two hours uh, until 2 p.m., which is when we began to uh, remove that reversal on I-26. And that 2 p.m. extension was due based upon the fact that at beginning at 9 o'clock this morning, we once again began to, to see an increase in traffic moving westbound on I-26, including the reverse lanes. And by 11 o'clock this morning, we had volumes leaving the uh, Charleston region that would have exceeded capacity of the traditional I-26 westbound. And those volumes continued for the next two hours and finally started to drop at around <coughs> 1 p.m., um, which gave us uh, reassurance that we could leave it open until 2 and then begin the process of removing it. 
As the governor mentioned, we did start the removal process at 2 p.m. and the general process for that is to stop access to the reverse side at the I-526 interchange at 2 p.m. and then we will, in cooperation with patrol, work our way up the interstate in a similar fashion as we instituted it from the Charleston area up all the way back to Columbia to restore um, the, uh, the reverted side back to normal operations. We <coughs> expect that to last to take about three to four hours. So our anticipated time for completion of that operation will be about 6 p.m. tonight. Since that reversal was put into place on I-26, we were able to uh, accommodate approximately or actually greater than 81,000 vehicles heading westbound on I-26 on both sides. And that includes 16,000 vehicles that traveled on the reverse side alone uh, heading westbound out of the area. Our estimated evacuees on all coastal zones is approximately 360,000 people. That's through 8 a.m. this morning, 43% of which we estimate to come from the Charleston region, 34% evacuating from the Myrtle Beach region, and about 23% from the Beaufort Hilton Head Island area. Just to follow up on something we mentioned yesterday as the storm comes in and the tropical storm force winds and the hurricane force winds come our way, just be mindful if you're out and about traveling that our high level bridges in the coastal region, once winds become 35 miles per hour sustained winds, we will uh, advise high profile vehicles, so trucks, not to travel over those bridges or to use caution. Once those winds become 45 mile, miles per hour sustained, then we will advise against traveling on those structures due to safety considerations. And finally, as the governor mentioned, please do not drive around any barricades, especially uh, in this particular region. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Greg Smith, on the public safety. Thank you, Governor. Um, <clears throat> as the uh, secretary mentioned earlier, at 2 o'clock, uh, all entry points uh, to the reverse side of I-26 uh, were closed. Uh, so if motors were already on the uh, reverse side of I-26 from the Charleston area, they can continue to travel to the uh, Columbia area. And as stated earlier, this will allow us to begin the process of returning the um, eastbound lanes of I-26 back to their normal traffic uh, flow. Uh, this process, again, uh, will take about three to four hours. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, the eastbound lanes of I-26 will resume. Uh, we are also making uh, preparation to assist SLED and ESF-13 regarding any law enforcement and security missions uh, for a post-storm post response. Uh, we are also working and making preparations uh, to assist DOT with any road closures or uh, diversion routes uh, as a result of any flooding, and this again will be a post-storm uh, response. And uh, I would like to end on uh, the phrase uh, the phrase, turn around, don't drown, cannot be more important than now. Uh, we heard the governor mention earlier about standing water. Please do not drive through standing water because as the governor said, we don't know what's under the standing water. It could be down power lines, it could be uh, tree branches, debris, and it could be that the roadway is washed out. So please uh, do not drive in standing water. Thank you. Thank you. Chief Kiel, Good afternoon. Uh, as yesterday, we have 525 state law enforcement and South Carolina National Guard MPs that are in the three conglomerates uh, from, from Beaufort to uh, Horry County. Those, uh, as those lane reversals are ending, as you've heard uh, today, uh, those officers have already began patrols in those evacuated areas. We will continue to, to beef up those forces in those areas as Director Smith said, with additional highway patrolmen uh, and uh, officers from the Department of Public Safety, as I've said each day, uh, we will not tolerate any lawless, lawlessness in these areas. Um, it is important that people can leave their homes, evacuate for their personal safety, and return to their homes in the same condition that they left them, hopefully. And so I just want to remind everyone that those individuals out there who may feel like they want to try and take advantage of this situation. 
again, we will be on the lookout for you. Uh, state and local law enforcement will arrest you, and you will go to jail. Thank you. Director Tooney, Department of Health and Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> we remain in contact with the 174 health care facilities by, that were impacted by the mandatory medical evacuation order. Our EMS team has been assisting these facilities in safely evacuating their patients and residents ahead of the storm. Our dam safety team completed pre-storm dam assessments yesterday. No <coughs> issues were observed. We conducted assessments of drinking water plants and intakes and wastewater plants within potential flood inundation areas. We also contacted the 84 community drinking water systems and 76 wastewater treatment facilities located along the coast. At this time, there are no concerns with preparedness or operational status of any of those facilities. Yesterday, we closed the summer shellfish harvesting uh, along the coast. Nine <coughs> companies, uh, harvesters, had permits during that period of time. This is a minimum 21-day closure. Our Caroline 1855-4SC DHEC or 1855-472-3432 is open to answer questions from our patients and women, infant, and children clients. Governor, thank you. Thank you. Michael Leach, Department of Social Services. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. Uh, following DSS mission to provide for the safety and well-being of children, youth, and vulnerable adults, DSS teams have been working around the clock to contact every licensed foster home, group home, child care centers, and individuals in adult protective services in the evacuation zones to ensure our vulnerable populations are not in harm's way. We want to thank the dedicated DSS staff, Red Cross volunteers, and other volunteer organizations currently engaged in all mission critical aspects of sheltering in, this effect, in, the, in the affected areas. South Carolina currently has 22 shelters open across the state, 18 are general population shelters, and four medical need shelters. Of these shelters, 16 are utilizing school buildings. As of 1.30, we have a total population of 1,175 in our shelters. This number includes 1,147 general population clients and 28 medical needs clients. South Carolina currently has 31 shelters on standby across the state. 12 are general population shelters and 19 are medical needs shelters, many open uh, this afternoon. Our current total capacity is 12,849, and we are at 9% of that capacity. The Red Cross and National Guard are actively working to transport costs to shelters now. We are tracking these efforts. We are in constant communication with shelter staff about their continuing needs for COTS and working to facilitate distri distribution. We recommend evacuees bring blankets, sleeping bags, and pillows, medications, and any special foods if you are on a restricted diet. We have partners supplying food and water at all operating shelters. Shelter information can be found at scemd.org. You may also contact the public information phone system line at 866-246-0133. Shelter staff are available to assist with coordinating accommodations and support for persons with functional and access needs uh, via, our, via our partnership with ABLE SC. Some shelters are pet friend friendly, uh, in, in specifically in count, uh, counties in Colleton, Berkeley, Dorchester, and Charleston, but staff at all shelters will be prepared to assist evacuees in, identify, in identifying local resources to care for pets. Because DSS county offices located in the evacuation zones are closed, we ask the patients of our citizens who experience longer wait times when calling about benefits. DSS Early Care and Education activated their emergency hotline over the weekend for child care facilities to report damage, report closures, and request to expand capacity to care for children from facilities affected by the evacuation. Thank you very much. Emily Farr, Department of Licensing and Regulation. Thank you. Um, so for those who have decided not to evacuate or those who are unable to act to evacuate. Um, as this storm moves in, if you find yourself in need of assistance, please call 911. 
um, State Fire continues to work with the search and rescue partners to ensure that we have urban search and rescue and swift water boat rescue teams ready to serve however and wherever we may need to as this storm uh, passes through South Carolina. Um, as General McCarty mentioned, we have SE Heart teams, those are helicopter aquatic rescue teams available. We have a urban search and rescue with swift water rescue capabilities staged in Manning for quick deployment out to the coastal communities. We already have swift water rescue teams in North Charleston, City of Charleston, Somerville, and Horry County. The South Carolina State Guard also has a swift water rescue team with wide area search capabilities um, that is in Mullins at the Armory. We have also requested assistance from FEMA for urban search and rescue um, and swift water rescue teams that will help um, and really enhance our capabilities in being able to respond um, to any uh, uh, water rescue or search and rescue needs that we may have. But as the governor um, stated at the beginning, we urge everyone now is the time to leave so that you won't need our services um, once the storm comes through. Um, just to switch gears for a moment of a message from the, from the Office of State Fire Marshal that the governor also mentioned about generators. Every time we have an extended period of time of power outages, we unfortunately um, tend to have fatalities due to carbon monoxide poisoning. So just to emphasize that, that point, if you do use a generator, please make sure to use them outside, away from doors and windows. Um, do not use the generators in your garage, an attached garage, even if you're leaving the garage door open. Um, and if you need to refuel your generator, make sure to turn it off. Make sure it is completely cooled down before you do so. Um, we do have more details about safe generator use and other important hurricane-related information on the agency's website. That is llr.sc.gov. llr.sc.gov. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Kim Stimson, Emergency Management Division. Thank you, sir. Um, the uh, priorities here at the State Emergency Operations Center are going to be shifting a little bit. We're still currently supporting evacuation and shelter operations and obviously going to maintain sheltering operations uh, for the near term. But we're moving also to initial response uh, with an emphasis in three areas. One is communications. Uh, as this storm unfolds, we're going to have to be able to uh, be in communications with the local authorities so we know what their needs are. Uh, the second is the transportation, is once we know what their needs are, we're going to have to have an ability to get into the impacted area. So that's very critical. And then I don't think it comes as any surprise, the uh, in energy restoration piece of it. Uh, we rely on energy pretty much in everything we do, so getting that up and running is certainly a top priority. At the same time, we'll continue planning for re-entry and uh, the longer-term recovery. <coughs> in terms of some of the county information, uh, Right now, there's 21 counties uh, that are at some level of operation, 10 counties at operation condition 2 and 11 at 1. Their primary focus is very similar to us. Right now, still finishing up the evacuation piece, sheltering operations, and then planning for that initial response over the next 24 hours. Uh, as a part of that, many counties have already uh, uh, prepositioned boat teams and high water vehicles uh, in areas where they think that they're going to need them. And there, right now, there are nine county governments uh, that are either closed or we're going to have early dismissals today. And that there's ten uh, uh, counties uh, with schools that are closed or with early dismissals today as well. Uh, we continue to get logistics requests. We've got right now about uh, 300 uh, requests. And uh, we've uh, completed or in progress uh, about two-thirds of those and then the remainder are being action. And they range from uh, anywhere from, again, from generators to ambulances. Uh, we do expect to get some additional requests for food and water distribution uh, as this operation unfolds. I already mentioned some of the assistance that we're getting from out of state. Uh, we still have uh, two teams here, from uh, one from uh, Tennessee EMAC to help us with uh, any follow-on requests, uh, and then also state fire as well as the additional helicopter support. And we'll be requesting an additional incident support team to help uh, manage any future water and food uh, distribution issues. Um, and I uh, already mentioned is that uh, we're in the process of requesting a uh, federal uh, urban search and rescue team uh, to assist with uh, not just search and rescue, but also water rescue. 
Again, remind everybody to uh, please use our website at scend.org to stay connected and get the latest information, and also our mobile app. Um, the Know Your Zone uh, module we have on both of them, they've had uh, about 600,000 visits here in the last couple of days, so that's fairly significant there. And our state hotline, the PIPS, the Public Information Phone System, remains active. If you have any questions, uh, you can call that number at one 866 246-0133 and we'll have Spanish interpreters available and so far uh, they've answered about 3,600 uh, inquiries uh, to date right now. I just wanted to uh, uh, reiterate some of what the governor has already said. Uh, if you choose to stay in an evacuation zone, uh, some of the things you should consider. Uh, certainly tell loved ones or next of kin where you are. Uh, stay indoors and away from windows or, or glass doors. Take refuge in a small interior room, closet, or hallway, and close all interior doors and secure and brace external doors, and keep uh, curtains and blinds closed. Uh, certainly very important to secure your uh, important and personal documents and put those in some kind of plastic container or Ziploc bag uh, as long as it's watertight. Uh, certainly don't go outside if there's a lull uh, as the eye of the hurricane goes over. Uh, you're going to have uh, you know, the, the storm will pick up again, and so it's important to stay inside and stay safe. Uh, certainly be prepared to go without electricity for a, an extended period of time. And uh, be, uh, again, as the governor said, be prepared for short-term isolation uh, where no one's going to be able to get to you. Uh, and certainly conserve your food and uh, battery use. Stay away from those down power lines. They're extremely dangerous. and. And certainly do not attempt to uh, swim or wade through high standing water. You may not see what's below. Sir? Thank you. Are there any questions? Governor McMaster. Yes, sir. When it comes to first responders, um, you talk about putting them in danger, of course, people not wanting to put them in danger if they stay. Is there like a cutoff um, in terms of like wind speed where they typically would stop patrolling? It all depends, but wind speed, when it gets to Trouble be around 45, sir. Tropical storm. Tropical, tropical storm. Tropical storm, storm winds and that, that's, that's, uh, that's 39 miles an hour. Yes. Can we get an update on evacuees, number of people we think have left the coast? Yes. So as uh, from the start of the evacuation through 8 a.m. this morning, we are estimating approximately 360,000. People have evacuated, and that number is broken down to approximately 43% of that 360,000 is attributed to the Charleston region, 34% to the Myrtle Beach region, and 23% to the Beaufort Hilton Head Island region. Do we still think 10 to 15% of those are tourists? Correct. Okay. Yes. Yes, we do. Thank you. More questions? You mentioned yes. FEMA being requested. At what exact point would they step in to help out? Well, we've already re requested. Uh, funds to be made available for what we know is coming? Uh, basically, we've got uh, FEMA is here. We have our federal coordinating officer here. Uh, we're coordinating with them right now uh, uh, on various issues. They've already agreed, I think, to uh, provide that urban search and rescue team uh, that was ordered today. So they're <coughs> available. Uh, they've got commodities stored at Northfield, uh, food, water, uh, cots. Uh, so they're there and available, and so it's just a matter of us when we think that we need to have them step in to assist us. In terms of evacuees... Here's some more. Come forward. Yeah, FEMA's been uh, strategically placing personnel, commodities, resources across the area of operation from Florida all the way to Virginia. We have a lot of resources and commodities here in South Carolina. We have 91 FEMA personnel working here in the uh, EOC and the interim operating facility and over 600 federal and non-federal uh, resources working in the state right now. So we are in support of the state. When they request FEMA assistance, we'll be ready to provide them. I'm Alan Jarvis. I'm federal coordinating officer for this disaster. In terms of evacuees, how does that compare to previous years? Is there any concern that we're getting evacuee fatigue, essentially? Okay. Take that, Governor. So the numbers are very comparable to previous, uh, the last time we had the evacuation last year, very, very similar numbers uh, with regards to the, the total number at this point in the evacuation order. 
I've seen people tweet in response to the end of the lane reversal. You know, does this mean that they can travel to Charleston? Obviously, that's not what you guys want <laughs> motorists to do, even though it's been lifted. Correct. And we're still under an uh, evacuation order, so the, obviously we don't want people traveling into the area of, of concern into the storm. And uh, as Director Smith mentioned, at about 6 p.m. tonight is when we expect <coughs> the, the eastbound direction to be restored, ready to receive traffic. However, we still advise against travel at this point in time. That would open it up for emergency vehicles to the extent that they can get there and the conditions are not too dangerous for them to do that. Governor, yes. <coughs> the latest numbers of evacuees, do you feel like that's enough people? We want everyone to leave. There, there's some that uh, can't leave <coughs> for, or don't want to leave for various reasons. Uh, we urge people to be safe, rather be safe than sorry. The, the rates, uh, they fluctuate. This is about, as the Director of Secretary Hall said, about the same as it was last year. But people are still leaving right now. Um, but all we can do is, is give the facts and tell what we believe is coming at the time. And it changes, as you know, from hour to hour. But there's no doubt about it. We're, we're going to experience hurricane winds, at least in gusts. If the hurricane turns a little bit inward, it'll be worse. If it turns outward, it'll be better. We're hoping it turns outward. But we are we're praying it'll turn outward. But it, it looks like it's uh, going to be upon us. So we urge everyone, and remember, it's, it's not just the wind, it's, it's the water. If you're in that coastal area, that water can be treacherous, even worse than the wind. Secretary Hall, I know at this point you talk about the crews being in place if, you know, you need to kind of set some things up. Is there any thought at this point just that there may need to be some sort of an aqua barrier system or, sand, or is it just still monitoring the situation? Um, at this point in time, we don't see uh, an area that we would need to deploy. Uh, a device like that, again, it's a different situation you're dealing with with this storm. It's not floodwaters coming downstream in a river. It's basically storm surge coming up from the coast, and devices like that do not operate and function well under that type of condition. So, um, you know, we're as the governor mentioned, we're hopeful that the storm either stays far enough away to minimize the storm surge impacts, or as it comes through, that that, that storm surge comes in and gets out quickly. And then, of course, our goal at the DOT is to preposition ourselves so that as soon as it, as soon as it is safe for us to do so, we will immediately get into those areas with our partners with National Guard, local fire departments, DPS, and others to uh, make sure the roads are cleared of any downed trees, make any temporary emergency repairs we need to in order to maintain access or restore access. So um, we feel very comfortable that, that we've got enough crews Prepositioned and ready to move in for an immediate response and recovery. I've gotten a specific question on the Ravenel Bridge. What's the status of that? Ravenel is open. Um, the Ravenel uh, will remain open uh, until the winds become 45 miles per hour or greater sustained, and then that will be a decision made on the ground with our local law enforcement partners. Um, the bridge is, is safe, even with the projected wind forecast that. Uh, John Q mentioned earlier, we feel very comfortable that bridge is designed to sustain well more than those types of winds. So we have no concerns over the Ravenel. We do have concerns about people uh, still out and about traveling under these conditions. And so our concern is more for the people, not necessarily any concerns about the integrity of that bridge because we have confidence in that structure. Further questions? Thank you very much.